have to talk really loud. So yesterday, Tom and Cameron, what you missed is that we were working right here with these shapes. So if we click that ellipse tool, we can drag out an ellipse. And then we can fill it. And the place that we filled it was here in the swatches. But I want to show you that these two boxes are repeated right here in the swatches. So this one here, the top left, that's our fill box. And if I click it, fill is active. And if I click this one, stroke is active. And right now, if I click off this, th I won't even see anything here because the default isn't even on for some reason. So I can click that to get the default, and then I have this ellipse. So this time, I'll make another ellipse, and I'll make the fill active, and I'll come over here to swatches, and I can fill it. And I can change to the stroke here with this very tiny little icon. But if it's easier, I can come back here and say, switch to the stroke, and I want to have a black stroke, and I want it to be, and I can come up here and tell it I want it to be seven points. Okay, so that's the ellipse tool. If I press shift and I have to press and hold it, it's I'm holding it down, I pull out. I can't make an ellipse if I try. It's constrained to a circle. But I do have to let go of my mouse first because if I let go of shift, it stops bossing it. It stops constraining it. So I let go of my mouse first, and now I have a perfect circle. Okay, same deal with this over. Same deal with the other tools in here. So we have a rectangle tool. So I can make a rectangle. I can actually even fill it off here, but right now it's my stroke that's active. So I can actually swap it with this little tiny icon. This is called the swap icon. And it just swapped the fill and the stroke. So right now my stroke is active. So I'll make the stroke black. And again, I can change the line weight of the stroke up here. And they were playing around yesterday and finding all sorts of fun things and fun strokes. Okay, so that is the rectangle tool. Now, if I come here and draw something now, it's going to probably have the characteristics. Oh, no, it didn't. It reverted back. I'm going to change that to default. So what shift will do when I drag out, it will constrain a rectangle to a perfect square. But also what I want you to know is you can make something an exact size. So if I, I still have this one selected, you can tell because the bounding box, I can come up here and change the width to two enter. So I can make things exact by using this control panel, the exact width and height. Now I have some objects here. Let, let's see what our last one is. Our last one is the polygon tool. So when I drag out a polygon, I'm getting six sides right now. If I hold my shift, I'm going to get a perfect polygon with a perfect radius. Um, and I don't know why I keep getting out of default, but there's a polygon. How do we make a polygon with only three sides to get a triangle? So that we had to uh, figure out. And I, it's hard to believe that it's not up here in the control panel, but uh, we couldn't find it. But there is a way to do it, and that's just to click once on the screen. That gives you a dialog box. And you can set up. It will have taken probably the width from my last one. I can make it two and say OK. It has to be between three. Hmm. Okay, I will make this. I, it should be able to be two inches. And there I have one that is a very precise size. Uh, so now we have some shapes here. Just going to swap that again. If I want you to select shapes, the fast way to get everything is a control A on your screen. That selects everything. The second way to quickly get shapes is called a marquee select. And that means I click and I hold and I drag a bounding box. Now in Adobe, 
you only have to drag it around part of the object and if even so much as a little line is included in that bounding box these two just got selected and right now I'm going to change these ones to have a fill of green okay so marquee selecting is a fast easy way but what if I want everything except those two pink ones I have them selected right now how do I get them out of the selection I press my shift and I say you're in the selection now but I'm gonna shift select you and shift select you and when I turn all of those green I had taken those two out so shift select uh, removes from a selection set or adds to a selection set so if I just want the green ones now I can click the first one hold down my shift click the second one click the third one click the fourth one and I will make sure that I change the stroke all back to solid and click off and the ones that had stroke became solid so we played around with shapes I can move a shape with my select tool I can edit a shape anchor points with my direct select which hopefully we already remembered that so if I click on this shape I can pull I can start free forming using the handles and the anchor points with the direct selection tool so this is on our way to logos right when you need to do something custom we've talked about the pen tool and but we also have the ability to start with the shape and then uh, to edit the shape oh how to change the number of sides oh I thought I did let me come back to it if I click on the screen I can say I want three sides and there I've got my three sides okay so the other thing that we did yesterday was just uh, and one thing you need to know here that came up yesterday if there's no fill and I go to move this it's like I can't it there's nothing to grab onto so you have to go on a line in order to move it and then we made some little flowers so we started with this ellipse tool and uh, we we filled it and then we rotated it now we can rotate up here by telling it the number of degrees to do and I know these are a lot of tricks and going to be hard to remember but I'll I'll show them to you and yep question uh, actually that's a good question if I want to fill it with white I would choose paper and then it is like it has a fill but I don't know if that's a good idea because down the road this actually is gives you the ability to change the color of your paper to approximate the color of the stock that you're printing out on so that's what it's reserved for um, oh actually yeah you know what that's a good question we should be able to make a swatch that's pure white but I don't want to digress from here y yes we should be able to make a white swatch okay so this one to rotate I can rotate by putting my cursor outside a corner handle it it turns to a curve I click and I hold and I start to drag and I get that little protractor like Trent said now shift is going to help me be precise here if I have my shift key it's going to jump in increments of 45 degrees so I'm holding shift down right now as I'm doing this and if I let go I have done it exactly 45 I'll undo that because then what I showed people is how to duplicate and rotate at the same time that's a good question as well in illustrator I believe we can I'm not sure in here so I'm going to just show you that if you select one thing and you press your alt key just actually like Photoshop this worked right and then we drag and we get a duplicate so it's the alt key that gives you the duplicate and when we made the flower yesterday what we did is we clicked and we held 
we held down Alt to get a duplicate. We held down Shift, and we got our 45. Now, I think it was Karen later noticed that up here, transform again. And let's try it. And so there is a way and a shortcut uh, to transform again. And so we were able to get a little flower. We did it all manually yesterday. The other thing that I noticed yesterday uh, is this. Uh, it was actually with the polygon. So I'm just going to do a control A delete and I'm going to go get the polygon because what I learned from Illustrator is that if we dragged out a polygon and we press the up arrow key, we could change the number of sides. But it doesn't work like that in here. So that was interesting to me. So if I drag this out and I start pressing the up arrow key, what I get is two triangles taking up the space of, of where I've dragged out. And if I click it again, three, four, five. And the down arrow key just decreases the number. And the sideway key didn't do anything. So that's a little bit different from Illustrator, but it was a fun, just a fun thing we discovered. Karen, is there anything else that you can think of that we did yesterday?